Hey, welcome back to Linux for everyone, and welcome home. Are you a streamer, but you don't have a fancy Elgato Stream Deck or Stream Deck Mini? But maybe you have a Raspberry Pi and an old Android phone gathering dust. You can turn those into your own DIY Stream Deck with a sweet piece of open source software called StreamPi. Okay, so what is StreamPi exactly? Well, the developer describes it as a robust alternative for the Elgato Stream Deck built for Raspberry Pi. Now this software can be used in a number of ways, and in this video we're gonna show you how to get set up with StreamPi on your current machine and an Android phone. But first, pause this video, grab yourself a cup of coffee, and then we'll hear directly from the developer to introduce what StreamPi is all about. Hi, my name is Sam, and I'm very uh, happy to be introduced in the uh, Stream Pi, a portmanteau of the popular Elgato Stream Deck and the Raspberry Pi. Initially, it was created to run on the Raspberry Pi, uh, you know, with official touchscreen and sort of simulate the full experience. But we're hoping to branch out into all kinds of setups, multiple computer type setups, at mobile application development. We really want this to be available and accessible for everyone so that you don't have to shell out $150 on a Stream Deck. So a quick overview. This software is client server based, which means it's two pieces of software that work together. And it's all open source. The code is available on GitHub and we'll have the links to every piece that you need in the description for this video. So let's tackle the client first. The current version at the time of recording is version 0.0.6. It only runs on Android, but other clients are currently being worked on. The client is installed by sideloading the APK from the project's GitHub page, which you'll see in just a bit when we get to the installation. The latest version of the server is release 0.06, and right now it only works with the Android client, which is what we'll be looking at today. But the older 0.0.5 server and client version work with Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, although we haven't tested it on these platforms. Now the server is the software that's installed on the machine where OBS is installed, and it's how you configure the way the client looks. The software is designed to run cross-platform, and the plan is to have it running on all major platforms, including Linux, Windows, Mac OS, Android, and iOS. So let's look at the current feature set. You get full OBS integration using WebSockets, so all your scenes, sources, and transitions are detected and are controllable. You get Twitter integration to send tweets at the touch of a button. You get hotkey support, so macros for OBS, video editing, you can even launch applications on Windows from your Pi or Android. As far as features that are planned, integration with Spotify, Adobe, Discord, IFTTT support, and the ability to have more control over your computer. All right, let's look at how to get StreamPi installed. Linux for Everyone associate producer Oliver Kelly installed the server on his Linux Mint machine, which has OBS on it. Then he used his Pixel 3a XL for the client. It's a super handy setup because it allows you to use the touchscreen of the phone to control elements of OBS, launch websites, and run hotkeys or macros. So let's tackle server installation. We're gonna start by visiting stream-pi.com. From here, we'll click on download server and this will take us to their GitHub page. Next, click on releases, scroll down to assets and download the linux64.zip file. Once that's downloaded, we can extract it. Now, those of you that want to can do this in your terminal, but I'm gonna keep this easy. So let's just right click and choose extract. Now let's go into the Linux 64 folder we just extracted and find server.sh. Right click it, select properties, permissions, and then ensure that allow executing file as a program is checked. Now simply run it by double clicking. Now to get everything set up, we need to set the StreamPi server IP address. This would be the IP address of your local machine. So if you just pop open a terminal and type IP address and then enter, we should get something like this. 
And you should be looking for something that begins with EN if you're on Ethernet or WL if you're on Wi-Fi. As you can see here, we have a local address of 192.168.1.24. So we're just gonna pop that into the StreamPy server settings and we'll leave the port at its default, which is 1420. Now we're going to enable OBS Studio, click apply, and move on to installing the next piece of software. This is an OBS plugin. It's not made by the same developer of StreamPy, but it really helps tie this software to StreamPy. So if we head back to that server releases page, you're going to see a link to the OBS WebSocket GitHub page. On that page, head over to releases and then assets and download the .deb file. Then you should be able to simply double click it and install. So after installing that .deb file, open up OBS and then go to tools and make sure you have the WebSockets server settings in the menu. Click that and check the box to enable it. And make sure to turn off those tray alerts because those can really get in the way of your taskbar or panel. And a quick note that authentication isn't working in this version, but it is planned for a future release. Okay, we've got the server aspect squared away. Now let's get the client taken care of. On your Android phone, head over to stream-pi.com. Click on client, and this should take you to the StreamPy GitHub page for the client software. Scroll down until you see the releases, click that, and then scroll down to assets and download the client file ending in APK. Once that's downloaded, just open it up in your phone's file manager or browser, and it normally should be found in the downloads folder. Just tap it, install it, and be aware that you may get a warning asking you to allow unknown sources. We now need to give this app storage permissions. This should only really apply to newer versions of Android. Now head over to Settings, Applications, and then find StreamPy, tap Permissions, and make sure storage is allowed. Next, just find StreamPy in your Applications drawer and launch it, and then tap the screen to bring up your settings. Now here we're going to enter the IP of the StreamPy server, which is your computer. Enter that port if it's not there already, select apply, and then restart. And a little troubleshooting note here, if you have issues running the server after previously closing it, check your system monitor and kill the Java processes. You can do this by opening up system monitor and just start typing stream and you should see one or multiple Java processes. Right click those and kill them. Okay, so we have the server installed, we have the client installed. Let's launch them and dive into what we can do. Now I'm not gonna go into all the features here, but let's show you a basic one. Let's launch a website. So we'll just click launch a website, give it a name, and then put the URL in. Note that it has to have HTTPS colon slash slash, or it's not going to work currently. Next, we'll give it an icon. You can make one yourself, or there's a nice link at the bottom of this video to the Elgato Stream Deck Key Creator, which allows you to download some stock ones as well as customize your own. Now that that's all sorted, just apply it and we can test it out. And look, it opens up a browser with the page that you asked for. Now, that's not very interesting, but it still can be very useful. All right, let's have a look at another one. Let's try an OBS action. We'll try setting a source visibility. This allows you to turn a source on or off. So first we wanna give this an action name and then select a scene and then the source, then set the toggle to off. Give it an icon and there you go. Here I've selected to turn my monitor source off so my screen recording goes away, but my audio is still here. All right, how about setting a scene in OBS? First, we'll select set scene, give it an action name, select what scene you want to jump to. In this case, I wanna to jump to my game stream. And again, we'll give it a nice icon and add that. Now, when I give this a click, it should simply open up my game stream. Now, StreamPy is incredible, but there are a couple things I couldn't get working, like the ability to launch an application as it was looking for an exe file. I've reached out to the developer and added an issue to the GitHub page, which is being looked at. So hopefully in future releases, we will be able to launch apps on our Linux desktop from our phone. So we're gonna leave the rest of the exploring up to you guys. Go download StreamPy and have a look around with it yourselves, have some fun. 
All the links you need are in the description below, so please go check out StreamPy, let us know what you think in the comments, and if you have any questions for the developers, leave them down there also. We are in touch and hopefully we can get you an answer. All right guys, I'm gonna get out of here, but make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave any comments or feedback you have for the developer in the comments below and get yourself some Linux for Everyone merch. It really helps out the channel and it's pretty cool. On behalf of Oliver Kelly and the entire Linux for Everyone team, take care and take care of each other. I'll see you for the next video.